Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Gladys. How are you? Okay, a little, a little sick from my throat, but everything's okay. How about you? Well, I'm, I'm okay. Yes. Thank mm. you. Tell me, tell me how was your day. I'm sorry. How was your day? Well, it was um a little mm, regular because I I I hate the the routine. You hate that. I always the routine routine. Uh, uh -huh. I always hope something new every day. It's better, right? Yeah. Mm hmm But some people don't like that. They don't like new things, Gladys. Some people love the routine. Well, I actually I uh, didn't like that, but I learned to enjoy the change. Excellent. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And Jenny, how about you? How are you? Hi, teacher. Fine, thanks. And how was your day? Very busy. <laughs> this day was very busy. Mm -hmm. Tell us. Um in my work oh, all day i i have i have uh, much work attendant that requirement that other the rest people of my office in, in all morning in the afternoon i uh, how do you say how do you say Más tranquilo. <laughs> it's uh, in the afternoon. It was calmer. Excuse me. Calm or it's in the chat. Calmer. Calmer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Calmer. It, at uh, three and uh, three and a half, I want to. Uh, uh, we, uh, I left my work and take a bus to my house, and the rest of the of the afternoon I uh, rest with my pet and my family, oh. and now in a class of English. Good at three thirty. At three thirty. Mm hmm. Good. Excellent. And Carlos, how about you? How was your day? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, in my case, my, my day uh, has, has been uh, very important because I I I've been learning uh, some things about uh, computer uh, specifically um, a repair of computer uh, all the the day that I was uh, repaired the uh, a laptop and an effort that I I was um, testing some devices uh, and then um, I was uh, prove another another software that can be compatible with with my with the the hardware of of my laptop and maybe uh, it has been a day of much learning 
that's Thank all. Good, Carlos. All your mistakes are in the chat. That way you can try. No proving. Proving doesn't exist in English. It's trying, and it's not the hardware of my laptop. It's my laptop's hardware. Gladys. I have a question, teacher. Uh, which is the difference between trying and testing? Testing or tasting? Tasting, yeah. Tasting and trying. Try to swim, try to play soccer, trying. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. Well, good. I'm glad that we have several people here. It's eight o'clock. Um, so a little bit past. So we are ready to begin um, in our platform. Today we are at 1.4. Let's start off with 1.4. Here we're going to have Sandra. Go ahead and read the instructions, Sandra. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and try it together. Make sure that we understand. Helping us from yesterday, where we finished off. So, number one, Luis Fernando. Number two, Claudia. Number three, Jose. Number four, Josue. And we continue. Go ahead, Luis Fernando, number one. Uh, I'm sorry, teacher. I didn't hear you about the, this exercise. You are number one. I didn't appreciate my out country. Okay. I didn't, by the time I was 15. All right, don't worry, we're going to check. Number two. Uh, that was Claudia. Go ahead, Claudia. Sorry. I think is I learn how to communicate better. Okay. All right. Number three, Jose Luis. Um, the moment I go my first paycheck, what is the meaning of paycheck? Salary. Ah. <laughs> um, let me see. I released that I wasn't a child anymore. Okay. Pronunciation realized. Realized. Okay. Good. Lily, number four. As soon as I left home, I I didn't appreciate I didn't appreciate my own country. Okay, okay. Number five, Josue. Um, I have learned to, uh, pardon, I learned how to get along better with people. Okay. Good. Number six, Jenny. After I began a relationship, I learned how to communicate better. Okay. Cool. Number seven, Gladys. Before I traveled abroad, I didn't appreciate my own country. Okay. 
number eight, oh, Sandra. Until like uh, I got really sick. Um, uh, I have understood the importance of good health. Okay. Now, pretty good. Most of them are correct, but not all of them. Let's take a look at some of them. They were wrong. Okay. Number one is not correct. Number one, we selected, I didn't appreciate. The correct was, I had learned how to take care of myself. So that means that you do this by the time is the action happened before that, by the time. Mm -hmm. Number two, not correct. Until, that means you didn't do this um, before. Until means it didn't happen on before that. So you never save money before you started working part-time. Number three of, was also not correct. You didn't understand the value of money until you receive and you have to work for it. Number three. Number four was not correct. Number four was as soon as I left home, that's when you leave home, like you go out to your own place, you have your own apartment, then you realize you weren't a child anymore. Not when you real, not when you left home, like you left your country. Okay, number five was correct. And number six and seven were correct as well. And number eight. So as we can see, the first ones are the ones that we didn't get. So right now, what are we gonna do with our partners? We're gonna finish with our own examples, our own formation. So with your partners, you complete with you. By the time I was 15, I had already worked at three different jobs, for example, for me. Now, the same for you and your partners. Complete all of them with your own information. Are you ready? Yes, teacher. Yes? All right.
Okay, any questions? It's okay, all of the time expressions by the time until uh, when? Teacher, I don't know if we did the, the correct because we solved the S1.5, but I don't know if that was the instruction. <laughs> no, it was not the instructions. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's okay. It happens. Remember, we finished 1.4. The instructions were in 1.4, complete with your own information. By the time I was 15, like in the examples. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, don't worry. It's good that you are ahead. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, then if there are no questions, all right, let's go ahead and do the listening activity. And our next part is our listening. Here, we're going to listen to people talking about important events in their life. Remember yesterday we learned they're called turning points. Turning points are things, not memories, not memories, but things that change your life, right? So listen to the three people and identify each person what was the turning point? And then answer the questions. Here we go. Page 74, exercise four, listening. Important events, part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. One, Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. Two. For Sally. She says she Spanish. Okay, great. Let's listen for Henry. Henry. I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. Three, Debbie. Okay, good. And the last one for Debbie. I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know? I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. What was number three? Page 74. Exercise four. She was, top she was a top she was student. Top was a student in her class. Excellent. And here, um, why did Sally become, Sally was the first girl? Mm. What happened with Sally? After she took Spanish, what happened? 
He felt proud about felt proud of. Okay, she felt proud of herself. Good. And for Henry, what happened? Became more confident. Became a lot of going. More outgoing. Outgoing or more confident? More confident. More confident. Okay. And for Debbie? Became a lot of a lot, a, lot, a lot of outgoing. Okay, a lot more outgoing. Very good. Great. Those are the ones that we have correctly. Is out is okay the vocabulary? Uh, feel proud of, outgoing. Those words are they is that okay? I have a question. Yeah. What's the meaning of uh, outgoing? Becoming a lot more outgoing. It means talkative. It means sociable. So if somebody is outgoing, they are sociable and talkative. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Any other words? No? Teacher, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would go, I would go in. Is it a compound adjective? It, it is out going. It's just one because going is a verb. But ah, okay. Outgoing is an adjective, not a compound one. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, great. So now we're going to go ahead and go on to the next part, which is learning to describe behavior and personality. What is behavior and what is personality? Behavior is like the people act well or, or bad. Okay. And personality? And personality is the... Um, how do you say uh, como es la persona? Okay, so how the person is. Uh -huh. That is behavior or personality? Personality. Okay, all right. Well, today we're going to learn some vocabulary exactly for that to learn how to describe those different things. We're about to study some adjectives which will help you talk about behavior and personality. Ambitious, argumentative, carefree, conscientious, naive, pragmatic, rebellious, sensible, sophisticated, Can you tell us how you behaved in your teens, in your 20s? How do you behave now? Try to be as honest as possible. Okay. So let's take a look at those words. Make sure they're clear. It's okay, all of those? Are there any words that you're not, you're not sure what they mean? No. Na naive. Not, naive. naive. It's like the person that believes in Santa Claus. Oh. And pragmatic? Pragmatic is the person that is, they think with their head and not with their heart. What about carefree? Uh -huh, carefree. carefree. Carefree, they don't care. They do YOLO. They do whatever is in life. You only live once. Okay. It's okay and the others? Rebe rebellious. Re rebellious. Rebellious is the person that always, they want to go against. They Usually the teenagers, the teenagers want to go against their parents. They say, oh, I know. The parents say no, and they say yes. The parents say yes, and they say no. They are rebellious. Any 
It's okay. Yes, no. Wait, it's okay. It's okay. okay, all right, good. I see everybody's very silent. Okay, good. So let's take a look. Okay. So in this moment, that's what we're going to do with our partners. We're going to talk about how you were as a teenager. As an example, when I was 15, I was very rebellious. I used to go out to parties and drinking with my friends and partying. I didn't care about the consequences. Then in my early 20s, I became a lot more sophisticated and a lot more mature. Um, eventually, I learned how to. That is the idea. So with your partner, you're going to describe how you have changed throughout your years and your life, how you were when you were younger, and then how you changed and why you changed in your life. Okay. Any words, any vocabulary that you'd like to know before we begin? Yes, please, again. Which words, Lillian? Can, I, I will, um, can you put again the, the screen, please? Argumentative. Okay. Okay. No, I, I was thinking about which of that word was related, related with my childhood. <laughs> Only that. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, I, I took that. Great. And you don't have to use only those what? words. You can use okay. other words that describe you. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe, for example, me, when I was five years old, I was very selfish. I didn't like to share or give anything with anybody. Okay. Maybe uh, when you were 12, you were very explosive and you got angry very easily. Maybe you are very shy and you never spoke to anybody in high school. It's not only those words. Those are some words to help you have an idea how to describe yourself. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No more questions. No? All right. Then let's do it.
Okay, I see we are back. Any words, any questions? Everything okay? Everything okay. Everything okay. Excellent. All right, then. Okay. Let's take a look. We are going to have 45 seconds then. Each person has 45 seconds to describe themselves, use the vocabulary. The objective is to have 12 sentences in 45 seconds. That is to improve your fluency and your times. Okay, who's first? We are ready. Queen number one. Claudia. All right, Claudia, let's do it. 
Okay. Claudia, when, describe yourself. Go. Yes. When I was 15, I remember to be a person quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, no more social. Uh, study. Estudioso, se dice así. No. Eh, eh, friendly mm, a little selfish <laughs> mm, is it uh, this okay. is thank I you. remember <laughs> no problem thank you very much Cloud. 45 seconds thank you that's good. Now, Claudia, what you need to do is develop your ideas for describing. You are giving me a list like you're going to the supermarket. When you go to the supermarket, uh, tomatoes, potatoes, mushrooms, you need to be able to describe. When you go to a job interview, when you apply, when you talk for your visa in the American embassy, why do you want to go to U.S.? Family, house, friends, shop. No, you have to be able to describe it. So the next time, work on it. Estudioso, it's in the chat. That is your mistake. It's studious. The pronunciation is studious. Excellent, Claudia. Who is next, Per? Me. All right, Kathy, 45 seconds. Go. Okay. When I was 15 years, uh, I remember that I was a carefree girl because I was talking with Luis that I remember that I was, for example, I left to the school, I go out uh, with my friends uh, to my house, and probably I can say that I was rebellious, but then uh, with the past time, for example, in my 20s, I changed my life because I was working and starting at the same time and I don't have too much uh, free time. So Great. thank you very much. That is the idea. Good. Very good, Kathy. Kathy, very nice job. We have some areas to improve. Um, the most important is making sure you use the correct grammar. You're using a lot of the verbs in the present. When you're saying, for example, when you are talking in the past, you're saying the things in the present. In the chat, I didn't understand what you meant when you said with the past time. Um, your mistake was 15 years. It's when I was 15 years old. 15 years is Spanish. 15 years old is English. And then you said, I left to the school. No, that I left school. So what do you mean with the past time? Cuando pasa el tiempo. Oh, cuando pasó el tiempo. Oh, con el paso uh, del tiempo. Okay, cuando pasó el tiempo. So in this case, it would be no when the time, it would be the following. As the time passed. Okay, great. Thank you, Kathy. Be careful with your verbs in the past. You are speaking a lot in the present when you mean the past. All right, who's next? 45 seconds. Me, teacher. Okay, you and then Lillian. Lillian was after you. Go ahead, Luis. 45 seconds, go. Okay, when I was uh, 15 and before, I was a naive person. So I believe in Santa Claus uh, very good. After that, uh, in my 20s, I don't believe in, in in Santa Claus. So, of that way, I am not a naive person by today. By after that, I think that it was a good remember for my childhood. Only that. Keep going, Luis. You had 45 seconds. So, all right. So in the case of you, Luis, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Luis, nice. Um, a couple of things, pronunciation and vocabulary. Uh, you said the word, the word is naive. 
the pronunciation is naive. No, I don't believe is I didn't. You're talking in the past. I didn't believe and is not a good remember. Remember is not the correct word. It is memory. It's not a good okay, thank you. memory. Okay. And Luis, you need more vocabulary. You need to have look for more, read more, because you have to continue speaking. You are speaking, you made four sentences, and then that's it. I finish. No, 45 seconds is 45 seconds. Imagine you want to work, you want to get more money, you speak in English. Oh, I finished. No, continue, continue. All right, let's go for the next one. Lillian, 45 seconds. You ready? Okay. When I was a teenager, I used to be a naive person. I used to be so shy and I was so sensible. Mm -hmm. And in these days, some, some stuff of that are changed because I'm more sociable in these days. And I am sensible, but I realize and analyze what is the value to be sensible than before. Because I, when I was a teenager, I used to cry for all and all the stuff affected me. And in these days, that's not happening anymore. And okay. I- That is it. Thank you so much. Very nice. Pretty good, Lillian, overall. Only a little bit of careful with your final sounds. The pronunciation is not changed. Changed is not is with a D. Changed. Correct. Changed. Correct. Not changed. Changed. Excellent. All in all, pretty good. Be careful with the final sound and the buffers. The uh, um, mm. All right. Good. Who's next? Yanni, go. Ready, Yanni? 45 seconds. When I was 15 years old, I was still naive. When I grew up, I learned to know the people. I have always be been very homely. I love spending my time with my pets and learning new things. But the only problem is that it's hard to find Something I love only. No, not only any. You got a lot of time. Okay. Uh, I I was I, I was still naive because my parents uh, never never had never left 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 me alone. Okay, that until is it. I left to study. Thank you so for much, Jenny. Forty five seconds are up. Excellent. Thank you very much. So Jenny, similar to Luis more vocabulary, more details to describe yourselves. So remember guys, I gave you five minutes with your partners and you have to be able to speak. If you had five minutes, you should speak 45 seconds. If not, you need to practice more, describe more, not only uh, uh, keep going, keep going. So more vocabulary, ready? Okay, who's next? Huh? Me. Okay. Let's go, Arely. You ready? Okay. 45 seconds. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I was sensible and because I didn't like the way my classmate um, used to, uh, how do you say, ponerme un nickname. Uh, but in my early 20s, I, beca I became more and responsible and sophisticated because I got my first job and I have to study at the university. Um, then as the time passed, I have to study a lot in order to achieve my goals at the end of the year. And I had to study more. Okay. Very good, good job. Very nice. I see that we're doing pretty good. We just need to work on our vocabulary. Some of the words we get confused. We don't remember how to say them. How do you say, remember also the final sound? Classmate is one. Classmates is plural. My classmates, not put me, a nickname is gave me. 
ponerme, in this case, would be gave me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Me. Okay, Sandra. 45 seconds. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh. Uh, no. Well, when I have five years old, um, I'm sociable. Um, I love to dance. And it was a stream. It's tricky. Uh, then uh, in the school, I was sensible. I cried very, very fast. Um, I'm quiet and I'm shy. Um, and now I'm more relaxed about it. And I, uh, I am conscious of the things uh, probably when when I started the college, I learned more uh, and okay. I, Thank I you have very to much. Do. Very good, 45 seconds. Uh, Sandra, what is college? Universidad. Okay, correct. Just wanted to make sure. Excellent. So Sandra, the one thing that I would recommend for you is work on your confidence. If we are having an, an interview, and this is a Zoom meeting, and we're having an interview, and, and, and you are looking everywhere, but you are not looking at me. Have more confidence, because many of the interviews for international companies, many of the interviews for business are going to be here, and you have to look at the person. Look at the screen. Don't look down. Don't look other ways. That way you can work a little bit more on it. But all, all in all, very good. And remember, the Spanish is I have five, and in English is I was five years old. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sandra. All right. Who's next? Five, four, three, Astri. Okay. Astri, you ready? Yes. Let's do it. Uh, well, when I was a teenager, I was a little bit shy and very reserved. It was difficult to me socialize with others, but even though um, I had many good friends. And after that, when I entered to the university, I began to be more sociable and to feel better with myself, although a little bit forced by my degree that demand to be more outgoing, sociable, and also diplomatic. But now I continue working on that part. And okay, very I always try to improve. Thank you so much, Ansari. Very good, 45 seconds as well. Um, only one small mistake, very good. And that is not to me, but it should be for me. Not to me was difficult, for me was difficult. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Thank you so much. Let's go on to the next activity. So, oh, I see Gladys. Gladys wanted to participate. All right, Gladys. Woo, almost without participating, Gladys, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, Gladys. when I... When I was a child, until when I was a teenager, I am always was a shy person. And as time passed, I I going to be more sociable. Nowadays, I'm a more confident. Continue. I'm always was yeah. well, well behaved, well behaved, and a good student. I, okay. I guess. Thank no problem. Uh, Thank you so much, Gladys. As you can see in the chat, is you are mixing a lot of your tenses. You are mixing past tense, present tense, future tense. Uh, you are not using the auxiliaries. You're saying, I'm always, 
was, is I always was, or I always am, but not the two past okay. and present. I going to be, remember you need the auxiliary, am with going to, I'm going to. So is this going to be in the future, Gladys, or is this in the past, I'm going to be? Yes, that, that is the, the imagine to at the beginning of the, the classes. I have to improve my grammar tenses yes. a lot. Yes, yes. You, you are mixing a lot, but don't worry. So that way you have in the chat, you can improve. All right. That was it, right? Okay. Then let's go ahead and continue on for the next activity. Very good. So now we're learning to describe ourselves a little bit. Here, we're gonna be looking at regrets and hypothetical situations. Let's watch a quick video. Should you have learned English before? Stay and learn how to express regrets and describe hypothetical situations. Page 75, exercise eight, grammar focus. Expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations. Expressing regret. I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. Describing hypothetical situations. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned another language. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now. When we want to express regrets, we need to follow the rule. Subject plus should have plus past participle. It's important for you to know the way you should have to speculate about or imagine things that did or didn't happen. For example, I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid. When you want to describe a hypothetical situation, we need to use this rule. If plus subject plus had plus past participle, comma, subject plus could or would have plus past participle. Notice the use of could or would have shows what didn't happen. For example, if I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have bought my own apartment. In other words, I didn't buy the house because I had no money. Can you put yourself in the following hypothetical situations? Write them on our discussion box. Another language. All right, let's take a look here at the examples. As we can see, we have the expressions should have and shouldn't have. And the verb is in the past participle, past participle. This is to express regrets. These are things that you wish you could have changed. So you're thinking about your childhood, last year, this morning, what can you have changed? Oh, I should have, okay. And then whatever action in the past participle. It's okay, the idea for regrets? Can you explain again, please? Of course, Lillian. So Lillian, imagine that you went, you, you left the house and it began to rain. Shh. You say, ah, it's a regret. It's something you wish you change. I should have brought my umbrella. I should have taken my umbrella, okay? Or I should have stayed home because it's raining. This is the way to express regrets. Regrets, things that you want to change. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. Now, the second part. The second part is not regret, but hypothetical situations. Hypothetical is similar, but in this case, not only one thing did you want to change, but also cause and effect. For this, we use if. Do you imagine the childhood? If the subject had 
or hadn't in the past participle. So as an example, if I had gone to the United States, I would have learned how to speak English. If I hadn't been born in El Salvador, I would have learned another language. This is the idea for describing hypothetical situations and for describing the idea of regrets. It's okay, both of them? It's okay. Okay, let's watch the video one more to make sure that it's clear for everyone. Press regrets and describe hypothetical situations. Page 75, exercise eight, grammar focus. Expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations. Expressing regret. I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. Describing hypothetical situations. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned another language. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now. When we want to express regrets, we need to follow the rule. Subject plus should have plus past participle. It's important for you to know the way you should have to speculate about or imagine things that did or didn't happen. For example, I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid. When you want to describe a hypothetical situation, we need to use this rule. If plus subject plus had plus past participle, comma, subject plus could or would have plus past participle. Notice the use of could or would have shows what didn't happen. For example, if I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have bought my own apartment. In other words, I didn't buy the house because I had no money. Can you put yourself in the phone? So now that we have the idea, is good because tomorrow we're going to have the opportunity to practice describing regrets and things that we wanted to change or hypothetical situations. Okay? Okay. Good. Okay. okay. So this means that today you should be finished for up to 1.9 in the platform. 1.9. Okay, teacher. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Have a nice night. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you.